The trip between Los Angeles, California and Las Vegas, Nevada is one that many Americans, at least Southern Californians, have made in their lifetime. And if you're visiting the US from somewhere else in the world, it's possibly a trip that you've either considered or made yourself. It's a quintessential all-American mini road trip. Not too long, just under 440 kilometers, depending on the route you take. Yet it takes in some really stunning scenery along the way. It's also inexplicably a trip that seems to be pretty popular with certain parts of the media, eager to test out an electric car's capabilities on what is a very challenging route that really doesn't represent the majority of mid distance road trips that you might be taking in an electric car. Motor Trend did it back in 2012 with a Tesla Model S when Tesla's supercharger network was still very much in its infancy. Other journalists, motoring and other, have repeated the trip with various different electric vehicles. And over the weekend, New York Times writer Ivan Penn covered a round trip that he made between the two cities in a Chevrolet Bolt EV. The headline? LA to Vegas and back in an electric car, eight hours driving, five more plugged in. And it's got several people hot under the collar, especially when the third paragraph reads, quote, most electric cars need to be plugged in after they've traveled 200 to 250 miles, a much shorter distance than similarly sized gasoline vehicles can run on a full tank. And charging them takes an hour or more. The article went on, detailing people that Penn met along the way. He mentioned a BMW i3 owner whose car was apparently only capable of charging at a rate of 10 miles per hour. And while the article does mention the billions of dollars going into the electric vehicle charging industry and throws a hat tip to Tesla and its supercharger network, which is far more convenient for long distance trips than any other third party rapid charging network today, it's easy to infer that from this article, you'd be wasting your time driving an EV, period. To be fair to Penn, the long form article, which you should read, there's a link below, did bring up some of the issues that are currently faced by the electric vehicle infrastructure industry. It mentions the queues at Tesla's most popular supercharger stations. It mentions the dire need for more charging infrastructure everywhere and the need to ensure that cars can charge at the speeds they're advertised at being capable of charging at, not a lot slower. It even hints at the hoops that must be jumped through by charging providers when looking for sites for their charging stations to be cited. Things like funding the charging stations, getting them commissioned. Yet the headline, that very scary headline, is what's grabbing people's attention. The reality though isn't quite as you might think. And because we've actually made that trip, or near as damn it ourselves, in a Chevrolet Bolt EV, we figured it was time to put some context to the story. Some metaphorical meat on the bones of something that might otherwise put you off buying an electric car. Let's detail the trip itself. We did only travel from LA to Vegas and not the other way around, and I should note that that is the toughest way to travel that route. But either the way, I figured it would make sense to share our experiences with you. Here's some footage from our own journey. Although it's really not very fun because we were traveling at night. We also didn't travel from LA as we were driving from Dunsmere in Northern California to Las Vegas via I-5, stopping for a charge in Bakersfield and then heading along State Route 58 to pick up the I-15. But as it was winter and we were fully laden with crew and equipment for CES, I think it's a close enough comparison. You head northeast out of LA and you wind your way up into State 15, skirting Victorville and Barstow. You travel through a couple of mountain passes, hitting a total elevation of nearly 1300 meters before sweeping back down to a few hundred. And then before you spy the lights of Vegas in the distance, you have one more pass to climb up onto the high desert plateau, just south of Mohawk Hill. And at 1,441 meters above sea level, it's the highest point on your trip. And the views are spectacular. Even if you're an expert in driving a plug-in car though, the almost 80 kilometers of constant climbing to get from your last charging point, the world's tallest thermometer, to that mountain peak is agonizing. Once there, however, it's downhill all the way to Vegas and you can at least breathe a sigh of relief. 
because of the weather and the extra weight of a luggage box on our Bolt TV's tow hitch, we stopped a couple of times en route, slapping our Bolt onto a slow 7 kilowatt regular charger for an hour while we stopped for supper in Barstow. By the time we arrived at the world's tallest thermometer, we were pretty low on charge. It was cold. We were cold. It was not super pleasant. And it was late at night. And everything was closed. But we'd also driven nearly 1100 kilometers in the same day. And with the final charge under our belt, we did that final killer summit and arrived safely in Vegas. Our trip, Northern California to Vegas via Bakersfield and Barstow, took about 18 hours, which is more than the 11 hours or so Google says it'll take if you just drive and never stop. During those extra seven hours of travel time, we stopped, we charged, we ate, we stretched our legs, and save for that one slow charge late at night in Barstow, we never really worried about charging or range. Penn's trip, a total travel time of 13 hours if you include both legs and charging, covered about 870 kilometers by our reckoning. And that charging time does feel a little long. The Bolt TV does take more than an hour to rapid charge from fully empty to completely full on a CCS quick charging station, even one that's capable of delivering 50 kilowatts or more. But charging from the yellow, I'm nearly empty, please charge me, to 80% full is a lot quicker. What does this tell us? Well, probably that Penn waited until the car was full before moving on, something that people do with a gas car because, well, they're used to completely filling up before moving on. But it also tells us something more disturbing, maybe even more sinister. No, not that Penn is somehow in cahoots and trying to kill the electric car, he's not. But that his experience, however gritty or not, is not the same experience that an experienced team of EV drivers have who know their stuff. We did the trip and we planned. We knew how to add in buffers. We knew when to unplug and move on, even if the car wasn't fully charged. We knew what effect the mountains would have on our car's range. But your average car driver doesn't. They don't have to think about that. That doesn't make them a fool, though. It makes them unprepared and probably unaware that they need to be prepared. Tesla, for its part, does try and eliminate some of the worry with its massive supercharger network, big car battery packs, and onboard intelligent route planning software that is always checking to see if you'll actually make it to your destination. Some rival automakers to Tesla are starting to look at offering the same kind of route planning functionality in their cars. And on long distance trips like this, that might help. For now, though, I use a better route planner for my long distance EV trips. I've linked to it below. As we've said before, however, it's not just about the vehicles or the charging, but drivers as well. Driving electric cars is a new, enjoyable, addictive experience. But until there are charging stations every few miles, longer distance trips do require you to plan a little. But let's not also forget that a trip between Los Angeles and Las Vegas isn't a day trip that's normal. It's certainly more common than some trips, but it isn't something that everyone and their dog will do at the weekend. And how easily you can make a trip of that length in an electric car will depend on road terrain, conditions, charging availability, where you live and how you drive. What can I say? LA to Vegas isn't your run of the mill weekend jaunt especially because of that insane bit of mountain climbing you have to do. TLDR, the New York Times road trip made some really valid points about charging availability. It also highlighted a lack of consumer awareness by virtue of Penn's apparent lack of knowledge. But it also showcases that we shouldn't assume everyone understands how an electric car drives or operates because they don't. We need to stop pretending that the electric car experience is identical to that of a gasoline car. There are advantages and disadvantages and differences to both. For us, our trip was enjoyable because we were able to take some time out along the way. But we entered that trip knowing what to expect along the way. This article highlights that dealers, advocates and automakers need to be having a conversation with consumers about long distance electric car travel. We definitely need more charging infrastructure as well, but we also need to be able to set better expectations about how that experience actually works. We shouldn't be saying trips like this are impossible, but we should make sure that expectations are properly set. 
that people understand how charging works and, for example, when's the best time to unplug and move on and just maybe start viewing an 80% charge as an actual 100% charge and the bit above that as a bonus extra bit you don't really use unless you get in with a full charge in the morning from a low overnight charge. If we all tackle those issues, we'll see less of these kind of headlines and much less of the knee-jerk reactions to boot. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, please do consider sending a dollar or two a month through Patreon, buying us a Kofi, or by going to our merch store. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.